Hello students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University discussing with you today regulation of kidney function. In our previous sessions, we have already discussed about kidney and by now you already know how kidney functions and how important kidney is for us as an organ. How blood is filtered, how urine is formed and how reabsorption and secretion and of course filtration takes place. But definitely it must be coming in your mind that if one organ in our body is so important, there should be some regulation. It cannot go on working independently on its own. There should be some regulatory mechanism and you may also wonder if regulatory mechanism is not there, suppose, then how it will perform function so accurately, so efficiently. My dear students, I have told you many times that our body is a wonderful machine and it regulates itself. Sometimes it corrects itself, but it is our duty also to see to it that we take proper care of our body as physiological systems. Let me now come down to the main topic, regulation of kidney function. The areas of our body which are involved primarily for this are hypothalamus. You know hypothalamus is part of brain. Then J G A juxta glomerular apparatus and heart in some way, indirectly heart also. You can see diagram of G J A juxta glomerular apparatus. Juxta means near, glomerular means glomerulus, apparatus is apparatus. So, something which is close to glomerulus that is juxta glomerular apparatus. This is one point to understand. You can see in the diagram it is a tubule, the tubule of the nephron which takes a turn and passes between afferent and efferent. Glomerulus is important and glomerular capillaries are in the Bowman's capsule. The afferent being bigger in diameter, efferent being smaller in diameter, due to pressure the filtration takes place. Now you can see between these two afferent and efferent arterioles are arteries, please remember. There is this GJA, juxta glomerular apparatus. It is a turning of tubular part and now it is touching afferent and efferent. You can see at the afferent there is area called macula densa which is touching afferent artery. This is going to give message to afferent regarding any changes in BP. We are going to discuss this in detail and as I told you heart controls or regulates kidney function indirectly by way of alteration in blood pressure. How all this happens in terms of regulation, we now try to understand. You know, we have some amount of blood in our body which we can say blood volume. We have extracellular fluid between the organs and also we have some ionic concentration in terms of sodium, potassium and other ions. Let us apply this knowledge to understand regulation of kidney function. Now, if there is change in blood volume because of some injury or due to some other reason, then blood volume will reduce. It will affect the blood pressure. Similarly, if body fluids are reduced in amount due to vomiting or diarrhea, that is also going to affect blood pressure and it will also affect ionic concentration like if there are loose motions you do lose salt also. Now if there are changes in blood volume or body fluids or ionic concentrations then it will affect the BP, the blood pressure. Osmoreceptors as the word indicates osmo in connection with water 
content in our body which can be through blood volume or can be through body fluids and receptor which will receive something. When the osmoreceptors are activated due to reduced fluid volume in the body, now this condition will stimulate hypothalamus. My students, you know that hypothalamus has all the centers to regulate pituitary functioning. In the hypothalamus, we have two nuclei, neurosecretory nuclei, which secrete hormones. One of the two hormones from hypothalamic neurosecretory nuclei is antidiuretic hormone or ADH. This is released in response to activation of osmoreceptors. Dear students, please try to understand that reduced blood volume activated osmoreceptors. Osmoreceptors stimulated hypothalamus and hypothalamus released the hormone ADH through posterior pituitary. We go further to understand the process. Hypothalamus is releasing ADH which is stored in the pituitary. Which part of the pituitary? Neurohypophysis or posterior lobe and now hormone has come out in the form of ADH. For your information, and the name for ADH is vasopressin because it has pressure effect on blood vessels. ADH, antidiuretic hormone because it is anti to diuresis. It reabsorbs water and stops diuresis. You may wonder what is diuresis? When you are giving out more water through urine or through loose motions, that is diuresis. If you want to stop it through ADH, then antidiuresis. So, antidiuresis will mean reabsorption of water or retention of water in the body which can be achieved by this hormone ADH. In the diagram, you can see very clearly two nuclei which I said hypothalamic neurosecretory nuclei. Why did I say neurosecretory? Because these are nerve cells which have become secretory in nature or these are glandular cells in addition to their neuronal characteristics. In short, these are nerve cells in the brain which are also secreting. There are two such nuclei, supraoptic and paraventricular and they secrete two hormones directly from hypothalamus known as oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone ADH. In today's topic, we are concerned with antidiuretic hormone or ADH. You can see the nerve cells axons are running from hypothalamus ending on to the neural lobe or neurohypophysis of the pituitary which is very clearly shown in this and they are stored in neurohypophysis. Students, please remember that this hormone is secreted from hypothalamus and stored in posterior lobe or neurohypophysis of the pituitary. Hence, it is not secreted by posterior lobe or neurohypophysis. Now, this ADH is released from neurohypophysis as per the requirement. Now, what is the requirement? Osmoreceptors were stimulated because there was dehydration or low or decreased body fluid and these osmoreceptors gave message to hypothalamus. Hypothalamus gave this message to neurohypophysis by way of sending ADH and now this ADH is available in your body. It will go to different parts of your body including kidney and it will do the reabsorption in the distal part of the tibule. You can see very clearly the ADH functioning in this particular slide in detail. ADH has two roles. One role is water reabsorption at the distal part of the tubule and other is to control glomerular function by causing constriction of the blood vessels entering the kidney. Try to understand this in a 
different way also. If there is a blood vessel and if you constrict, what will happen? It will alter the blood pressure because you have constricted the blood vessel. So that is what is going to happen here. When there is less water or less body fluid, then osmoreceptors are stimulated. They will cause the release of ADH and baroreceptors in the aortic arch and carotid sinus are stimulated and they will detect decreased blood pressure. Decreased body fluid, decreased blood pressure. So now you have to increase the blood pressure and increase water reabsorption and that is done by ADH. On one hand it will reabsorb water, on other hand it will cause constriction of blood vessel thereby increase the blood flow that sum total of these two will result into normal functioning of the kidney, hence the regulation of kidney function. Juxta glomerular apparatus, the location I have already explained, it is very complex regulatory role and it activates juxta glomerular cells which will release renin. Now let us understand the functioning, how it functions. Whenever there is alteration of blood pressure that is smelt or received by JG cells because they are very close to afferent arteriole of the kidney and once they receive that they secrete a hormone called renin. This renin will convert angiotensinogen in the body to angiotensin 1 and then to angiotensin this is done by renin. Now this angiotensin 2 has definite path of action. It is powerful vasoconstrictor. It will constrict the blood vessel, hence increase the blood flow, blood pressure. So glomerular blood pressure is increased, GFR, glomerular filtration rate is increased and it will also cause the release of aldosterone from adrenal cortex which will reabsorb sodium and water, hence the kidney functioning will be regulated. So we know the function of aldosterone, it will reabsorb sodium and water, it will increase the blood pressure which we wanted because blood pressure had gone low, increases GFR and this is called renin angiotensin mechanism which is important for regulation of kidney functioning. So these two cases were when blood pressure goes low and we have to increase it via kidney to have the normal functioning of kidney. The third one is the reverse where it will work in a reverse gear. If there is increased blood flow that means little more BP, higher BP then atrium or auricle of the heart receives the signal, it will release one factor called atrial natriuretic factor or ANF. Now this ANF will cause vasodilation, dilation of blood vessel, so BP will come low and hence there will be decreased blood flow and decreased BP and that way it will regulate kidney functioning and it is also antagonistic to renin angiotensin mechanism. It controls renin angiotensin mechanism. So you can appreciate that in kidney we have the regulation both ways. If there is high BP there is one mechanism and if there is low BP there is another mechanism. So that is how we control the functioning and kidney functioning is regulated. Regulation is important because if we do not do that then this is going to affect other organs also. With this we come to the end of regulation of kidney functioning. Thank you.